In these tough economic times, sometimes selling your car is the best solution. But beware, selling your vehicle to some dealerships may lead to you losing your car and the money. Masake Kana gives us this report. In these tough economic times, more people choose pre-owned vehicles when shopping for a ride, while many who are strapped for cash sell their used vehicles to dealerships across the country. But for some customers of a network of used car dealerships in Gauteng, the sweet deals they were promised instead left them out of pocket and out of the driver's seat. There are no words for how they have deliberately cheated people, stolen from people. In a WhatsApp group of nearly 60 people, Rajin Pillay and his associates Nessa Naika and Dylan Ankia, who work at used car dealerships in the south of Joburg, are accused of selling cars with no registration papers and without the consent of the owners. Randy Fritz, who sold his 2008 BMW 330i to Regen at Cars at Ridgeway in 2014, says the dealers move around various locations and often change the dealership names. I think they're dodging the people that they've actually conned, um, so that people think that it's new owners because it's a new name. The CIPC, which registers companies, shows that Regen Pillay, real name Sadasivan Pillay, was a director at Red Cars, which changed its name to Cars at Ridgeway. Regen told us that he and other partners were the owners of Hybrid Auto, a business registered as Hybrid Auctioneers, which also operates from the same premises as Cars at Ridgeway. On the day Mohabim Paki went to sell his 2003 VW Jetta to Hybrid Auto in 2018, he says he dealt with Nissan and a female consultant. After selling that car, I wanted to do another business that will help me with my studies. We agreed on that fifth. It's been a year, I have never received any money from them. Nissan Nika is a director of Carbar, said to have recently moved from Lanasia to Ridgeway, the same address that is currently listed as that of Cars at Ridgeway and Hybrid Auto. Regen says that he sublets the premises to Carbar. We dealt with Dylan from day one. Dylan Ankia, who allegedly introduced himself as Dylan Pele to some customers, was working at another dealership in Randburg when Terry Dix first met him in July 2018. She wanted to sell her bucky similar to this one and replace it with a Mercedes-Benz CLC 200. The bucky was very heavy on fuel, so we decided to have the Merc instead. Terry owed 125,000 rands on the financed bucky, and until she settled the outstanding amount, the vehicle belonged to the bank. Terry says Dylan told her that he had moved to Hybrid, his brother Regen's dealership, and said they would take the bucky off her hands. They then gave me a letter that they will um, settle the bucky. They never honored that. They ran away with the bucky. Dylan allegedly sold the vehicle, but Terry didn't receive any of the money. She was forced to continue repaying the loan on a bucky no longer in her possession. Selling a car that isn't fully paid off at the bank is a huge risk, and it's not encouraged by motor industry experts. Wendy Nola is a consumer rights journalist and activist. She says there are warning signs for consumers when doing business with dealerships. You need to inform your bank. If the bank doesn't do business with that dealership, then you know that's, that's a, a clue right there that perhaps this isn't a good way for you to go. At the time that Terry put her backy up for sale, financing for the Mercedes-Benz she wanted was already confirmed. To Terry's surprise, the Mercedes was delivered on a flatbed truck. Trust me, that costs them money. Why would they incur that extra cost um, for any other reason than the car is actually su such a dud that it's not drivable? Terry took the car straight to a mechanic. It had numerous faults that she says neither Dylan nor Regen had disclosed. We left the car there and I phoned Dylan and I phoned the brother. I said, best you go and collect it because I'm not going to continue with this finance. But by then, her bank had already paid the dealership for the Merc. Terry alleges that Dylan collected the car from the mechanic and promised to fix or replace it. They sold it to us for 200,000. It obviously escalated to 269. That was the last time Terry saw the Merc. 
In total, Terry now owes 394,000 rands for the two cars. And whomever is currently using the Bucky seems like a loose cannon on the roads. The fines started coming in one after the other. The fines are sitting close on 10,000 rand. Unlike Terry, though, Randy did get money for his car, but not all of it. Of the 200,000 rands he expected from cars at Ridgeway after selling his car to Regin, he only got 62,500 rands. When you get there, they give you stories. Like, um, now they were waiting for payment from a certain person, that person didn't pay. So now they can't pay you. If you're paying off 200,000 rand in the form of 1,000 rand every, every few months, how long is it going to take them to pay you? Randy engaged lawyers, but even a court ruling in his favor didn't motivate the dealership to pay him. Other disgruntled vehicle owners shared photos of their cars on social media, hoping to track down the people who bought them. Customers had information that the Palais had moved their business to Mayerton, more than 50 kilometers away from Johannesburg. So our undercover operative went car shopping at the Mayerton dealership. The new setup showcases around 20 vehicles, among them a sleek black Mercedes-Benz CLC 200, Terry's car, recognizable by its registration number from her original documents. The salesperson is none other than Dylan, the same Dylan who allegedly sold the car to Terry and later took it back for repairs. What I want to know if you have a specky and... A specky we don't guarantee, but I can check for you if there is a specky or not. If you're buying a second-hand car and they tell you that they don't have the spare key, key to give you right then and there, please walk away from the deal. Okay. So you said you're fixing the paper and... Everything uh, I'll do now and when you come through with the proof of payment, okay. then I'll be able to do a sale agreement for you as well. Okay. Essentially, Dylan is selling the same vehicle for a second time and without Terry or the bank's permission. According to the National Consumer Act, a consumer is someone who buys goods, not a seller. So the National Consumer Commission, which protects the rights of consumers, has no jurisdiction over conflicts where someone sells a car to a dealership and is not paid. 18 of the people in the WhatsApp group have opened police cases against Regin, Dylan and Nesson. Brigadier Matapelo Peters followed up on the status of the cases. Over 80% of them have been returned from the prosecutor and they were, the decision of the prosecutor was that they were civil matters. However, given that uh, the police have picked up a number of concerning common denominators, a team has been assigned to look again at these dockets. Over 60 of the dockets are sitting in the detective's offices where they have been instructed to re-investigate. No arrests have been made. We're taking a drive to Mayerton to confront Dylan about selling Terry's car without her permission. When Dylan saw the cameras, he broke into a sprint, but couldn't outrun our crew. Why are you selling Terry Dick's car and several other people's cars without their permission? Are you running a legitimate business here? So you understand that what you're doing is illegal. Does Terry know that her car is on sale? You're speaking to the right person. We already have you on spy cam, trying to sell this car. Oh well, there we have it. That speaks volumes. So the good news is, we found Terry's car. The bad news, Dylan refused to answer any of our questions or explain why he's operating illegally. We called the Palais brothers and their associates for their side of the story, but all their known contact numbers either went to voicemail or were unanswered. We left messages. Only Regen called us back, but refused to be on camera. He sent a lengthy response through his attorney. His broad explanation for cars sold without papers is that it is likely that those cars were sold footstools, meaning they were sold without guarantee or warranty. So we then try to track him down. Eventually he started blocking our calls wouldn't take our calls. Two suggestions that the business changed its name often to avoid irate customers, he responded that that inference is ludicrous and baseless. And Regen says if it was his intention to evade clients, he would have left the province or the suburb. 
and not occupied the same premises. Regen says the obligations due to Randy were erroneously overlooked and that he and his partners in the business were committed to a payment plan in this regard. A lot of people trusted him and this gave me the, call it a sense of security if you want, and that was my biggest mistake. Despite the fact that Mohapi's sale documents are on a hybrid letterhead, Regen wrote that Mohapi actually did business with Carbar, which is not owned by him. He went on to say that Carbar have assured him that they would be attending to the matter immediately. To be honest, I don't have hope. He's happy, he's living his life. We are suffering. Regen is doing his own investigation into Terry's allegations and says, he will ensure that any agreement legitimately entered into between her and Hybrid Auto will be attended to in due course, including the traffic fines accrued onto her name. I've stopped the debit order on the bank, which is obviously not, it's not conducive to a businesswoman like me having almost been blacklisted. Regin says he has thousands of satisfied customers and that it is unfortunate that we are only focusing on the plus minus 1.5% who've had an unsatisfactory experience.